Welcome to Modern Church Leader, a short daily show to help you grow your church, be more effective and efficient, and powerful for the kingdom of God. I've been really excited over the last five years, I guess, maybe more, uh, with this whole the democratization of design. Um, back when Canva first got started, uh, the CEO, Melanie, uh, she, was, she did an interview with me. I interviewed her for my uh, blog. And uh, she, she just talked about this concept of how making design more accessible to everyone um, and more affordable to everyone was uh, you know, just something she was extremely passionate about. And I think uh, tools like that are great for, for churches where they, they just don't have the time resources or maybe um, the, the person that they're hiring to do the graphics work for the church, they, they aren't super experienced, so they do need to kind of lean on templates and things like that. I think that's, that kind of stuff is really great. Um, so, you know, things like Canva, there's another one called Stencil, um, another one called Easel. They're basically all Canva copies with, you know, little, uh, differences here. I'm a Photoshop guy. Um, uh, graphic design is sort of my background. So, um, I'm still a big fan of Photoshop and they're improving things to make things better. So really, I think it depends on, you know, where exactly your, your talent is, uh, in their journey. Um, I'm also a big fan of Sunday Social. Uh, John, Jonathan Malm, the, the founder of Sunday Social, is a friend of mine. Um, and I think that's a great resource for churches who, um, you know, they're stretched thin on time. And uh, so using a graphic resource where they can sort of find templates. Um, Sunday Social has PSDs too, so you can pull the PSDs and, you know, enter your own text and that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, for the entry level uh, or the really strapped for time, <laughs> And energy, I think things like Canva, where they have templates ready to go, are great. Sunday Social is an absolute steal uh, for you know for the cost of their entire library of graphics, where you can just pull it into Photoshop if you have Photoshop and change things up. And uh, then, of course, if you're a pro, uh, Photoshop is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really just time saving. So even as as someone who knows Photoshop inside and out, I actually use Canvas for some things. Um, Churches may not need graphs and charts and things like that, like I do for like marketing reports. But, um, you know, the fact that they have sort of plug and play items right there within the interface, you don't have to scour the Internet for icon sets and, and stock photos and that kind of thing. It's really great to have it right in there in the whole interface, uh, making it super convenient. It's been you mentioned the the resizing. So something that I'm really adamant about, I'm speaking a lot about is that how you when you create social media content for your different channels, you can't just copy and paste the same thing across every channel because each one has different limitations, different uh, restrictions on dimensions and like what size things could be. Uh, and you have stories, which, you know, you, posting vertically is is the way to go, but that won't look good on an Instagram feed. And so it's like, you really do have to sort of repurpose thing. And the fact that a can Canva has like a magic button that'll automatically resize things for you is is one of the most brilliant innovations that, that they've made. Um, you can do something similar in, in Photoshop, but still it's a little more time intensive. So Canva just literally push up a button, tell it what sizes you want and it, it cranks them out. They, I mean, they have every kind of template imaginable on Canva now. I mean, it's it's astonishing. Like when they first started, it was like social media templates, your cover photo and this and that. Now it's like literally print design templates. People are making full on brochures, three page brochures. There's a couple of speakers here at this conference where <laughs> they did their entire presentation on Canva. Um, I think it's amazing. So yeah, things like brochures, print uh, pamphlets, uh, banner adver advertising, like printed banners. Uh, you, you can do those on there. I mean, the, the amount of ready to go templates they have is just literally anything you need. I actually created an online course specifically for like, what are the fundamentals I needed to know about design if I'm not a designer or if I'm like an early DIY, I taught myself design. I, I actually, I never went to school for design. Um, I taught myself everything just by watching other people and, and learning online. But the, the real core of, of everything is uh, understanding, number one, space. Being aware of the space that you're using and not trying to cram everything into one space. Uh, people have a very limited attention span. And they're, for lack of a better word, they're lazy. Uh, we're, I'm lazy. We're all lazy. So if we look at a graphic, uh, whether it be social media or a, a brochure, a flyer, and it has just 
a wall of information on it, we're checking out. We, we're not even gonna pay attention. So being aware of the space that you use, make make great use of white space. You know, a lot of, I see a lot of um, new designers or people who are just not very experienced with design, they like to fill all the space with everything. But understand that the lack of things actually emphasizes the thing that's there. So if you have uh, an apple on the table and then you have a bunch of other fruits around it, you're not gonna really notice the apple on the table because there's all this stuff going on. But you put that apple on a table and all the attention focuses there. It makes that apple so much more important. That's why you see, you know, when, when Apple, the company, showcases their products, it's one solitary thing floating in space. And uh, so just understand less is more. It's not just a cliche, less is more in design highlight the things that matter, be aware of the spatial elements. And typography is such a, a key thing, um, especially in web design. You know, I, I would venture to say 70% of web design is typography, like picking the right fonts, making sure they're legible um, and understanding that uh, there are certain fonts you never wanna use, <coughs> papyrus, <clears throat> comic sans, I'm talking to all you church people with your signatures in comic sans, <laughs> stop it. Um, but yeah, so uh, spatial awareness. Um, and then another thing that I'm like a big uh, s s sort of stickler on is what I call framing. So framing is this concept of if you're going to have you, a canvas, uh, which is what we call you know the, the space that the, uh, the actual element or graphic takes up. Um, if I have a canvas, I don't wanna put things too close to the edge of the canvas. Uh, text or calls to action buttons, whatever, what have you. If it's an important element that needs to be in the photo that you wanna be a focal point, never put it too close to the edges because it makes people feel claustrophobic. Um, it actually creates a, uh, a tension in us when we see things that are too close to the edge. So give yourself some space around, around the edge. Imagine a frame, uh, almost like a picture frame around the edge of the graphic and that is your no zone. Like don't put nothing. Don't put anything in that space. Keep it clear. So just give people's eyes some room to breathe on the side. That's a huge core element. And uh, the last component, the last component that's extremely key is balance. So if, if you think about your graphics as sort of a weight and scales, if you have a, a subject on this side of the canvas and then you have some text that you need to put, you wanna balance out that subject by placing the text in a place that's gonna sort of even out the, the weight. Everything in a visual has weight. And so you wanna sort of balance the elements out. Don't put everything on one side and have just nothing on the other side. Just try to balance it all out and keep that uh, the balance because as human beings, psychologically, we see symmetry as beauty. And whether that's dead on symmetry or asymmetry, we always are looking for the structure of a, a symmetrical object and that, instantly will make some designs look even more professional just by balancing things out a little bit more. Thanks for listening. Please review Modern Church Leader on Apple Podcasts and visit our website for more resources at tithe.ly or follow the links in the show notes.